people like Extinction Rebellion, Just Stop Oil, Greta Thunberg, people taking direct action, they're the fire alarm and we're the fire brigade. We're the, people like who come and, we're the people who come and fix things. Now, we are asking whatever happened to the Greens. Uh, they had a big breakthrough when Caroline Lucas became uh, the first Green MP in 2010. 13 years later, she's standing down. But now we're joined by uh, the uh, the Green Party candidate uh, hoping to replace her. Sean Bowie's in the studio with him. Good morning. Nice to, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Congratulations on being selected to replace um, uh, Caroline. We want to try and get to the bottom of when we're talking about with Just Stop Oil over here or uh, heat waves across Europe. There's so much of the climate conversations going on. The Greens aren't necessarily part of it. I want to read something to you because while we've been having this conversation, uh, Diana's texted in. says, the thing is with the Greens, it's also punishing and grim. They give the impression they don't like us. There's no message of hope. Voting for them would be like opting to be in detention at school. That's very harsh, and I don't recognise that description of us at all. I spend all of my time on the on the London Assembly. I've been co-leader yeah. of the Greens. I've taken part in the in the big debates for the election, putting forwards ideas that are about investing in people, about creating jobs, making their homes warmer in in winter, less overheated in summer, making sure they've got clean air, healthy streets. These are the policies we want to implement, and we'll do it from a government level, from a local government level, and and through the the. the an assembly through the mayor level as well. We are all about good ideas and pushing them forward. You were just talking to Terry from the um, German Greens about what Greens do when they're in government. I mean, we enter governments and, and arrangements like that with a great plan of good ideas. Um, and yes, yeah, some of them won't be taken up by the parties that we're working with, um, but a lot of them do. And that's that's the way we work. That's what we've done in London as well. Um, and these aren't just environmental policies either. They're social policies. We are all about making life better for people, helping people to thrive, respecting their rights, but also providing them with a good, healthy environment to grow up in. Is, that, is, is it a fair criticism that sometimes the green debate does become... You've got to stop driving your cars. You've got to stop eating meat. You've got to stop going on holiday. It's taking away the things that people like in life rather than talking about how this could be, you know, good quality jobs or lowering your energy bills. That actually it's a lot of it to do with the framing of it. Yeah, and a lot of the ideas that I've just talked yeah. about are, are big ideas. Yeah. Um, and then the, the things that make the, the, the radio and the, and the TV debates are the, the sort of edges of those things where there are some conflicts. So um, ultra low emission zone has been a big debate. I mean, in the London Assembly, cross party, we've spent a lot of time listening to those people who find that that policy, which is a really positive policy to, to save people's lives, Lives, where at the edges of that policy, some people are badly affected. And we've been arguing for, for example, a bigger scrappage scheme. We successfully got the uh, requirements for disabled people made much easier. You just need to prove your um, on certain benefits now instead of proving just, just replacing a, an adapted car. That, that really, really widens the scope of that. And that comes from listening to people who are affected yeah. at those edges. But unfortunately, I mean, we do find that people who um, are find themselves um, potentially not catered for by the initial plans that come forward um, are often very, very angry. But yeah. I promise you that we're always listening to those people and that we do want to fix those those edge problems. You know, if people find that um, going on holiday abroad um, is difficult because either it's it's more expensive, if you, if you need to fly for the third or fourth time a year, we want to reduce the taxes for your first flight, in fact, um, or that the, the island you're flying to is on fire. Yeah. Um, we want to make sure that the UK has a thriving tourist industry, wonderful places to visit, I mean, what's the purpose of a holiday if not to relax in great surroundings? Let's make the UK part of that as well. Um, why is it the, the I mean, concern about the environment? It, you know, it bounces around, but it has definitely gone up in recent times. But support for the Greens haven't. Are you, are you doing, as, as Tom Whipple was saying a bit earlier on, you're sort of mainstreaming concern about the environment in the way that UKIP mainstreams, you know, you probably won't appreciate the, the comparison with UKIP in, in lots of ways, but mainstream concern about Brussels and the EU without ever taking a big foothold in national politics. Is it, is, it, is it a win for you that people are concerned about the issues you're concerned about if ultimately it doesn't make that much difference in terms of national politics? I think our strategy is very different to UKIP's strategy. I mean, um, we think people will take notice of us when we start to threaten their votes, and, and you've seen that happen yeah. um, on a number of occasions. But we've got a very serious attitude to this. We are interested in power, which I don't think 
UKIP ever were. We're, we're building up our power through local government. I mean, we've, we've, we're stuck with first past the post ever except the London yeah. Assembly where I'm elected. Um, but on, in local councils where it is first past the post, we are increasing our number of representatives. If you look at the chart, it's pretty much exponential. We're going up by hundreds of councillors each time there's a big election. And that is showing, you know, in the influence that we're having. We're now in uh, partnerships, in administrations. Often we, you know, we don't do just formal coalitions, but we'll support um, the work of other parties. And we have a strong influence on, I think, 30 councils across the UK. And that's growing all the time. We're breaking through onto brand new councils in places you'd never believe people would vote green every single time there's an election. And we're, we're doing that so that we can build up, like we did in Brighton Pavilion originally, so that we can build up that record in local government and, and start to, to make it feasible for people to vote for us as MPs. And now we've got places all around the country where that's a possibility at the next election. Mm. It's, it's slower and steadier. It's, you know, it's not so much rather talk, than hair, You talk about first past the post. There. Given the system we have... Mm. Um, with no disrespect to your, your co-leaders, um, it's only going to be Rishi Sunak or Keir Starmer who is Prime Minister after the next election. It's a very binary thing, isn't it? it that's, uh, there that's is one Prime works. Minister with a Given lot of power. Given that yeah. you take your votes predominantly from uh, the Labour Party, and certainly where you're standing most of the time, your mm, your rivals are Labour MPs. Quibble with that a little bit. Well, in, in Brighton, that was that was a, a Labour seat before, wasn't it? Yeah, before but Caroline we, won it. I mean, in places... Bristol, the seat you're looking for, you're hoping to catch, is, is, taking, is up in against Labour. In terms of councillors this year, we took more seats off the Conservatives but, than we did off Labour. But your success at the next general election could, in a close outcome, prevent Keir Starmer becoming Prime Minister. The only thing that will prevent Keir Starmer being Prime Minister is Keir Starmer. Um, at the moment, he seems really careless about a lot of support that the Labour Party have won over the years for things that are to do with the environment, but also to do with social justice and human rights. The, the, the U-turns that we've seen on things like student tuition fees, on, on rent controls, even on the two-child benefit cap. You know, these are things that people are being turned away from Labour by. If we're a more attractive option, we're, we're just out there promoting positive things. Um, if we're a more attractive option, that's not that's not our fault. That's that's his fault. I mean, at the moment, I, I'm really, particularly with the um, reaction to the Uxbridge by-election, I'm, I'm really concerned that, that Keir Starmer isn't very good at politics, because that was outrageous, throwing the, the Mayor of London under the bus for a policy he He'd spent many years and his whole political reputation on. That's not actually good leadership, and you do want good leadership from a new prime minister. Um, I want to ask you: We talked about setting out the positive case and doing the positive things. Are Just Stop Oil a positive ally in your 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 your? hope that people will take climate issues seriously. Look, the climate situation is a genuine emergency. We are seeing the impacts of, of climate chaos in parts of Europe that you wouldn't expect. We can all now envisage being displaced by climate impacts. And people in those organisations are incredibly worried about that and prepared to take serious action. We're a different part of the picture. We're a very yeah. different part of the green movement. When you talk about um, emergencies, in some cases, they've stopped ambulances. That's an emergency. Is this the they, right they, they have a clear policy to move out of the way for green lights. If if you know if they they're obviously trying to get out of the way, they're not. They're never going to block an ambulance. But does it help intentionally? You but, being, but let me because let me, you're on the same side as them politically they, and in terms of the message. Are they damaging the the cause essentially? If you want people to, because actually what it ends up doing is a whole load of people in an argument about just stop oil. Mm rather than talking about the issues. And, and then, you know, so you have a whole load of people suddenly find themselves against the issue that you're campaigning on. I don't, I don't think that makes a lot of sense. Again, we're talking about the things that make the news, the things that are on the edges. My view, and the way I talk about it, is that, that people like Extinction Rebellion, Just Stop Oil, Greta Thunberg, people taking direct action, they're the fire alarm, and we're the fire brigade. We're the, people like who come and, we're the people who come and fix things. Um, you know, we are... They're, they're, they're almost an essential part of the um, the wider movement. There's always going to be people who are protesting about the most serious but like last week issues. I had, uh, Mark... But we're, we're the ones... You, know, you vote for us because you know last that we're week, the ones who are sensible. We're the ones who are going you're to be on the London coming Assembly. in. Last week and, I had Mark Rowley, the head stuff. of the Met, was sitting in the chair where you are. Mm. He said he had 500 officers caught up last week dealing with Just Stop Oil protests. That, that's his choice. That is his choice um, to, to put that but much that's policing his job. resource. He's got 
of police people breaking like the law. I mean, if you see, do you think you, you shouldn't be doing that? I've I've been on protests before where the policing has been absolutely out of all proportion um, to what was being planned in terms of disruption. Um, I can't comment on these particular deployments. But if a climate sceptic turned up to your office and threw black paint all over your office, you'd call the police, wouldn't you? We we we, we would. I mean, you know, there's 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 levels of damage and and criminality. Walking slowly in the road, though. I mean, you know, um, we are the part of the movement that is there to act on the concerns of those people, how those people express those concerns, isn't really our responsibility. And again, you know, we've spent more of this interview have, on this. Well, not really. We actually, we should be talking about how many billions of pounds need to go into um, home insulation, why we need to stop And where does that billions of pounds come from? Oil. Is that well, higher taxes? That initially comes from, from taxes on wealth, stopping subsidising the fossil fuel industry, making sure that we've got rational policies around taxing carbon. But ultimately, those kinds of investments create jobs. That all comes back into a, a bigger, stronger, more resilient economy in the end. And it saves people money on their bills. Yet every single person would benefit from the, the countrywide insulation programme that we have got planned. Those are, those are big picture things. Um, they're not annoying, yeah. so they're not making, they're not making the news. <laughs> uh, last question then, how many Green MPs will there be after the next election? We've got really, really strong campaigns and candidates in Brighton Pavilion, in Bristol Central, in Herefordshire and in Waveney Valley in Suffolk and Norfolk and those are the seats that we're going to be fighting the very, very hardest to win in the next general election. We hope we'll succeed because we need, whoever the next government is, we need green voices in Parliament, holding them to account, putting forward those great ideas and making sure that they don't just drift off at the first yeah. sign of opposition. Sean Berry, really good to see you. Thanks so much for coming in the, uh, this morning. Uh, Sean Berry, as I said, uh, Green Party Labour Assembly member and now the candidate in Brighton Pavilion, uh, where uh, Caroline Lucy stands up. Really good to see you. Thanks for coming in today.